Okay, the purpose of this video is to show a, uh, a build that I made for making a foot switch for digital uh, uh, cameras. We have a new Sony um, Alpha 7R and we have this Nikon D810 and we have a D800. I started with the Nikons here and now I've moved over to the Sony for making foot switches. We have in the other room a remote control um, that just goes right into the plug, but sometimes you need two hands free and it's nice to have a foot switch. And I didn't see one online, so I went ahead and built one. Um, if you're here for the uh, uh, Bendix Antique Radio Restoration or my Seeberg uh, Jukebox, those are going to have to wait until time allows, but I will get back to those. Okay, so for this uh, foot switch, in the other room we have a remote, that's the easiest way, where you have a transmitter and a receiver. Um, on this one, what I did was I bought a conventional foot switch. Sadly, it only had one position, just on or off. And this is it right here, so I had to modify it. Now, this is made by a company called, I think, Temco, T-E-M-C-O. I'll come up close on this thing so you can see it. Okay, it's the model CN0003. And the reason I got this, it was pretty reasonably priced. It was 16 bucks, but it's incredibly well made. It's made of cast aluminum, and um, it's very robust. Uh, and I, I really like the, uh, the, the construction and the action of it. It's very nicely spring-loaded. And so the way I modified it, uh, I opened the top of it, and it has a built-in relay in two positions, one normally open and one normally closed. Uh, for the camera, you're going to use the normally open position, so it closes the circuit when you press on and actuate the, uh, the foot switch here. And so it was just doing a simple switch, and you can see that there's, if I can come in here, there's a bar down there, and the bar lifts and uh, hits, the, uh, hits the switch. So what I did was I put in a, a secondary switch. I drilled a couple of holes here in the side, and these are pretty ubiquitous. I had a bunch of these on a, uh, in, a, in a drawer of different kinds. So I put a couple of spacers just to bring it over so it was far enough to be on, on the same floor area. And I adjusted it so it actuates after this one. So you press it down part way, you get that one. And then the rest of the way, you get the other one. So this one is going to be the switch for uh, the primary one. is going to be wired for actuating the camera in terms of focusing and waking the camera and then all the way down in that area is going to sh uh, actuate the shutter. So there's only three wires that you really have to have come out of here so I could have used a phono plug. I ended up using a telephone jack because that way I could run the cord as long as I wanted and it's easy to with a crimping machine uh, to make it any length you want but you could use any wires that you wanted to fixed I just wanted it for that reason. So there's just, there's a common ground. So I tied the two grounds together of the two switches. And then you have just two signals and they're just simple open closed switches. One for the uh, waking and focusing and the other for, um, for sh doing the shutter. So I had, I just wired them to a, uh, to a phono jack. And I just happened to have this one. Otherwise I would have had a single one. No use having a bank of five, but it was handy. Um, so, so as not to confuse the, uh, the left and the right, which is easy to do when running lines, I made the two center ones both ground. I tied them together. So common ground for the two center of the four poles of a standard RJ11 telephone jack. And then the two outside ones are the, respectively the focus and the waking focusing. So I have them, and um, then you can set your own length of cable. See up here on the camera, we have a, uh, a two-sided bus to, uh, to attach it to the camera. And then I made my own cobbled together Nikon um, remote and wired it in. And so to show you what the pinout is on the Nikon D series, let me see if I can come up here and I have a, a printout here for you. All right, so you can see that you have a pin there, number two. If you're, if you're looking at the three registration uh, notches that are on the, on the barrel there, 
um, you'll see that starting clockwise from the top on the one o'clock position you have a pin. Pin number two, the next one, is the one that is the, uh, actually it's the shutter. And as you go along and go around, you'll see that in the uh, about the seven o'clock position, you'll see that is the common ground. And then pin nine, which is one of the two center pins, is the waking one that also sets, uh, sets up the autofocus. So I got this cable, it was only like about two bucks, and it was for one of those wired uh, remotes. And it did come with a phono plug, but I decided to take it off, and that's why I put it to the, um, to the telephone RJ11 cable. So on this particular one, yours might be different. Um, the one for the shutter was a red lead. The one to wake the camera was yellow or yellowish green, and then the ground was blue. So I put those into the uh, respective uh, uh, parts of a cable. Let's see if I can focus in on it. And then I just crimped it. So I had the, uh, the shutter on one side, the wake on the other side, into one of the two centers. That's where I put the common ground. And for those three wires, I gave it a crimp. And now it's ready to go into the camera. So that's it for that. Now for the Sony, they have a very sim a similar system. You can get these very cheap for a couple of buck um, wired remotes. They go to a USB, but it's the same, and the USB goes into the camera instead of this odd proprietary round plug that um, Nikon has. But it's the same kind of thing. You'll open these up, and you'll see that there's... Oh, let's see if I can turn here. All right, you'll see that there's a couple of leads looks like the top one is the ground, the second one, which is white, and this one, the second one, the yellow one, is the one that wakes the camera, and then finally at the bottom there's a red one. That is the shutter, I would imagine. So same kind of thing. You would take this one for the Sony camera, you'd get rid of this part, and you'd put these leads and bring them down to your foot switch. So the main part is wiring a, a two-position foot switch. And for that, you, if you can't find one that has two positions, you're just going to have to add a, a second relay, like into this Tempco unit. And that's all it is. And then after that, if they had this whole thing together, which I guess I could do, let's, um, should have a place to put this thing. So, the this will go on the floor. And then we'll just plug the wire into it. So we'll do that right now. Then up on the camera. You'll put this into the jack. Then over here. Plug it in right here. and we should be ready to go. So there's our foot switch. So there you go, wake the camera, it's just part way down, and then the rest of the camera fires it. So you can just, whenever you want to take a picture, and that's all there is to it.